Today, I find myself in Pennsylvania, taking a look at a mall that appears to have held its own so far. But, is the mall as healthy as we think it is? Let's step inside and find out. So, while we trot through the mall, I should give a heads up and say that I did have one issue with the footage I collected. Because the mall has one giant skylight that stretches almost the entire mall, the sun had played a little havoc with my camera's light balance and exposure. Nonetheless, this is a mall I've wanted to cover for a while, even if it's not really that dead, so I'll have to play the cards I've been dealt with. So, first things first, let's talk about the mall's architecture. And I have to say, I love it. Even though the fountain was removed years ago, I still love the way this mall looks. There's something about a 1990s mall that really does it for me. The skylights bring in lots of natural light, even if it does interfere with my camera. But it eliminates most of the need for any interior lighting even on, say, a really nasty and stormy day. The tile work is also pretty good too, with that speckled look. Hell, even the shade of green they use to further accent the mall, which you can see around the skylights and the open ceiling. I know a good portion of my audience prefers the 70s and 80s architecture when it comes to malls, but for me, the 90s is where it's at. And here we are in front of Boscov's, which is looking good and looking 90s as always. We'll also come back to it later, but while here, there's this interesting planter and statue in front of Boscov's, which I thought was pretty interesting. Well, it's interesting to see malls maintain something like this, which makes me wonder, were there more features like that throughout the mall at one time? Overall, the mall has a pretty good roster of tenants. You have the mandatory Bath and Body Works, Victoria's Secret, and GNC, and there are quite a few off-brand stores that you might not normally find in, the, in a mall, but don't fret, because the mall does still have Aeropostale, Children's Place, and American Eagle. One issue I have noticed, though, is that the food court is starting to look a little barren. And, as I've said before, we'll get a closer look at that later on as well. So 
So, as good as this mall appears to be holding up, there are a few problems with this mall. And two of them are pretty big problems. Those two problems are Bonton and Sears. I don't think I need to familiarize anyone with the legacy of Sears, but Bonton is a more unique story. When we get a quick walk around inside, I'll start talking about their economic turmoil in a moment. That circle in the center court is where the big fountain used to be in this mall. I say it was removed due to vagrancy because of the fact someone posted a video of their friend jumping into the fountain and both of them running off in the end laughing like idiots. Others say that the fountain was removed in an effort to create more leasable space like that children's amusement ride. Behind that kiosk and vending machine is a vacant wing that would have led to a potential expansion. I'm not quite sure what would have gone back there, especially in today's time. And naturally, Sears. The world's slowest liquidation sale keeps on trucking. So here we are entering Bonton. This particular location is in late stages of liquidation. Now, for those of you that don't know, Bonton has been on the fritz for years. I didn't know of this until 2017. Hell, I didn't even know of Bonton's existence until 2016. And quite frankly, they're in absolutely terrible financial shape. So much so that they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Despite bids from vendors and other groups to buy a select number of the Bonton roster, the entire company was approved for liquidation. Now, you might say, oh, Bonton? That's just a few dozen stores. Actually, no. Bonton owns several other department store names, which include Boston Store, Carson's, Yonkers, Elder Beerman, Bergner's, and Herberger's, if I'm pronouncing that right. There's no way to sugarcoat this. The retail environment, specifically in the Northeast and the Midwest, is about to be hit very hard with this liquidation. And when you think about it, it's actually pretty depressing to think about. Jobs are going to be lost, charities and town events are going to be hindered pretty heavily by this. So, with Bonton no longer in the picture, what is to be done with their vacant spaces? Or at least, what will be done with this particular mall's Bonton? Well, that brings us to the next problem this mall faces, and that is Johnstown itself. Johnstown has been undergoing some serious problems involving crime and a lack of jobs, as well as other factors. In fact, it's been voted as one of the worst towns in Pennsylvania. Like, about as low as Scranton is right now. I'm not saying this to be mean, I'm saying this because it is actually kind of true. No offense to anyone who lives here. I am sure some of you are pretty depressed with the loss of Bonton, so to cheer you guys up, let's take a quick walk around Boskovs and take a look at their beautiful 1990s aesthetics.
so all in all, this mall is holding up pretty well. Few 1990s malls are able to manage that. Ocalo Mall didn't hold up very well, and now it's just a vacant building with half a Dillard's. There is a mall up in Arondacoy, New York that didn't hold up so well either. But here we are in a Johnstown Galleria, and although it isn't perfect, it's at least successful to some degree. Only time will tell if the owners are able to adapt to changing times and markets. I personally want to see this mall survive, and I would like to see it thrive. I do think it is still possible if the owners can play their cards right. Anyway, before I go, I'm gonna grab a bite to eat at the Italian oven, because I am a simple guy and I like pizza. But on our way out, I do hope you guys enjoy the video. If you did, throw me a like and pass the video around. If you didn't like the video, well, before you sit there and call me an idiot, give me some constructive criticism about why you think I'm an idiot. But if you enjoy my content, pass me a dollar on Patreon, all the money will go right back into my car's gas money so I can get to more of these places. Until then, this is Doomy Grunt, wishing you and the Johnstown Galleria farewell, and good luck.